I'm here to talk to you about evidence. Uh, oh, oh, before I, before I talk about it, I'm not, again. So, now I'm the investigator, okay? The investigator, now I'm thinking. Yeah? What, I'm out there, I'm thinking. Yeah? Everything's safe, now I'm thinking. Um, here I'm talking about evidence. I know you guys do with evidence, and evidence is items collected from something, some, from something or a fishing vessel to prove a elements of a crime. Okay? It, it may include documents, uh, like example, a first fishing permit, um, BMS. Um, BMS uh, images, or well, evidence may be part of an individual or not. So uh, my example, easy example, son, 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 bring up those, uh, bring up the log books, please. Bring up those, the ones I told you. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm the investigator now, okay? I'm a, uh, hmm, I have uh, physical evidence. Malaysia, Malaysia. Uh, says here you, you were not here attending the CFET conference, training. Okay? Yeah. I, I spoke to Mr. Song there and he said that uh, you guys signed in and signed out. <laughs> Okay. Where's your evidence that you were here? Do you have any evidence? <laughs> exactly. Okay. So, did you take a photo with anybody today? A photo could be evidence, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, as an investigator, these logs, it's like a fishing log. This is very important. Very important. You examine, you analyze, something is missing here, and you want to go further and investigate. Okay? Okay. Okay, so what, what types of evidence do we have here? Anybody? Anybody? What, what could be evidence? Fish. Fish, exactly. What else? Hmm? Gear. Gear, okay. Logbook. Logbook, what else? Think, think outside the box. CCTV. <laughs> what about the uh, fishery observers? Uh, Logbooks. What about uh, photos from the fishery observers? Yeah. So anything can be a uh, Anything can be evidence, as long as it supports the violation of a crime. Okay, what you think may or may have may have not happened. So, who, evidence proves who committed the violation, whether it's the vessel operator, the vessel fishing master, the vessel owners, you know, or or the could a marked fishing gear. Could be evidence. Mm -hmm. Out there, you see some floating lines out there. Uh, and it has, uh, I don't know, some, like you said, drugs inside the, the, the buoys. How do you, whose who's buoy is that? Do you know? It could be markings on the buoy. What type of vessel? Right? So, anybody, anybody? Out there, anybody picked up evidence? Anybody from a fishing vessel? Anything? What if what if the captain uses a knife on a fishery observers? Would would the the knife be evidence? Huh? Okay. So you know you wanna you wanna save that in case uh, in the U.S. we take it to uh, what is known as a court proceedings. And that could tell whether the individual was guilty or not guilty. So. No. 
Okay, come on guys, I have some candy again, okay? Let's go. So types of types of physical evidence, documents, uh, like I said, the logs, the fishing logs, electronic, like Todd pointed out, the GPS chart plotter, the VMS, anything, even your phone could be evidence. Okay, it's a, it's a type of electronic, an object, an object like a buoy, a buoy out there with marked telling the name of the IUU fishing vessel. That could be evidence. You know, the vessel may not be there, but the buoys there, buoys around in that vicinity, that could be evidence that something happened. Okay. Um, uh, there's physical evidence. Anybody, uh, anybody can tell me what physical evidence is? Physical. Shark tooth? Yeah. Okay. What else? Shark fin. Shark fin. Good. Good, good question. Um, something you can touch, so, something tangible, right? Something tangible, something you can hold and, and, and pass back and forth. Um, something that that object, that object links something, like a, links to a violation, whether or not be illegal or it might be legal. Okay? Um, it establishes something about the crime. It links someone or something to the crime. Okay? And the way we treat evidence, we always, we always treat it as not just hanging it off. We always have paperwork to show, and we always, we always uh, put it in a plastic bag. And, and how many would watch? Uh, I don't want to bring this, but CSI, Crime Scene Investigation. Anybody? You guys watch that? Huh? I know what you do, right? Hawaii Five-O. People talk about Hawaii Five-O. Do you see them seizing evidence? Bullets, gun, that's evidence, that's physical evidence. Not in typically fisheries, but that's what's known as physical evidence. Yeah. Uh, so physical evidence could be fish, you know, the fish is uh, from an IUU boat vessel, the fish is all illegal, so that could be evidence. Meat, meat, meat could be crime. The fishing gear again, DNA, coral, coral. Like you said, somebody else talking to. Uh, they use dynamite in the coral. They use dynamite for fishing. Who is that? Dynamite, right? It, it could injure the coral. Coral, the coral uh, destroyed could be evidence. Right? Any tangible object. Any, hold it. Oh yeah, the vessel itself would be evidence, yes. Exactly. <laughs> okay guys. Um yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, uh, my vessel. This is the situation. My vessel is a first sign vessel. And you found out that I have uh, a hook and line uh, fishing fishing. So, is this one kind of example of physical evidence for IUU? Or? Because my license is only a, it's only a person. But so, am I guilty of a IUU or or any I can violate any RFMO? Do you mean to fish for your own personal Pers food? Yeah, that is only for one. Brendan would like to play. <laughs> this is a very challenging topic, but I'm just going to, without going into too much detail on this, it all comes down to what is in your national legislation. If your national legislation prevents a fishing vessel from fishing any, outside any technique that it is licensed to do, or if it stops people from recreationally or subsistence fishing, um, which if someone had a, a hand line on board, that would purely be for subsistence fishing. Um, I don't think they would be using that for commercial purposes. You need to check what is in your national legislation. Because that 
and no, no one can have the answer for you on that one on whether that's uh, IU fishing or not. It's I wouldn't say it's IUU you fishing. I wouldn't say it's illegal fishing. Um, it's not really. It's not unreported because it's not really going to be used for commercial purposes. It probably more falls under that un un unregulated um, element. So you would need to work out, um, yeah, what is in your national legislation. Yeah, we we've had a few cases of this previously. Um, and it's quite a challenge for us as well. Yeah, just to, uh, when I was an AFO inspector, it, uh, there was a moratorium on cod. And quite often, there was one or two cods in the trawl. And they would not freeze it, they would salt it, especially the, the Portuguese fishermen. And of course, it was for their consumption. But because the rules were, the domestic rules were different in Portugal and Spain, and there were vessels from both countries, we, what we normally did is that in the inspection report, even if there was no infringements, in the comments, we would say there were 200 kilos of salted cod. And then the flag state will have to deal with it. Because in one it was forbidden, the other one was accepted. But because it was an RFMO, at RFMO level, it was not a, really an infringement because obviously the fish was not frozen, it was not to be commercialized, it was for the crew to eat during the trip. But still, we made it into the comments. And then it was for the flag state to prosecute or not. Good, thank you. Any more questions? Who's dead? I'm going to move on. Okay. Uh, we have documentary evidence. In fishery cases, this is this is a lot. Like I said, Todd expanded on this. Document evidence. Fishery observers report. Um, it's a story that written itself. Every day you look and, and what the vessel's been doing. You know, the vessel maybe had set uh, on marine mammals, or the vessel had um, set in a closed area. Um, so that you gotta read that. It's documentary evidence. You, you gotta be able to determine if it's a violation or not. Okay. Uh, any, any evidence in the form of documents, okay, that's considered, even a photograph. Once you print a photograph, that picture is your evidence, right? That's a document now, right? So, okay. um, examples of documentary evidence, you're gonna see fishing log sheets, vessel offload, these are the examples. Bank statements, fishing master personal logs. Like I said, fishing we, we, we cringe on this fishing master personal logs because in our experience, that was the key evidence to prove the violation. So it's a common practice. So look at everything before you get off that boat. Look at everything, take photos, uh, and try to try to make your case. Okay? Fishing observer data, electronic navigation, photos. Uh, computers could be evidence. How, how many have computers? At home, up right there. You have a computer, right? So say, say the captain has a computer, and like you said, Todd said, are you guys, are you guys a computer expert? When you guys go on board, do you know everything about the computers? No. So you can just leave it alone, and like you said, photo and get call somebody to uh, another expert or call your computer person to come on board and and try to take the computer off secure and safely so you don't you know, tamper with any evidence. Yeah. If the computers, if it's on, do not turn off. Okay, so these are the you know, computers and telephones. Telephones now, I think you have passwords. Everybody has passwords, face ID. It's a little different now, it's a little harder. Okay, in the US, in order to look at a phone, we need a, we need a judge's signature now. So we need a court order. We can't just take the phone and look at it without their consent. If they don't consent, then, then we can't just take a look at their phone. So a phone is, is, is their expectation of privacy. We need a court order by the judge. So. Okay. 
But both both these things have in common is is photograph. For you guys, I recommend photograph and photograph. Okay. Like I do, like this is a picture when I went on a vessel. I don't know what I'm looking at. I don't, I don't, I'm not a computer expert. I just photograph the scene. Okay, photograph, photograph was on the computer. It's proving that it was on. It was working condition. So. Just uh, quickly, Brian. Sorry. Yes. Just to quickly come back to the mobile phone. I'm sorry to keep harping over this. Once again, it comes back to your national legislation. Under my um, under my legislation. I'm allowed to take, uh, I'm allowed to see someone's mobile phone and I'm allowed to um, actually go through that phone and see evidence from there. We have got some successful prosecutions because people have taken photos of fish that they've caught um, in our fishing zone because it has a GPS um, signet, signature on it and we've got successful prosecutions that way. So if your legislation allows you to seize mobile phones and go through the process of actually, I guess, going through the phone, you may actually be able to find some very good evidence to put towards your case. Oh, yes, I agree. I agree. I wish the United States, we could look at all phones. I wish that. That's, we'll, get, we'll, get, yeah, we'll have a lot of work, but we can. So, um, phones are the key. Everything, you know, you put your photos, like you said, put your photos, you put your notes. I bet you the vessel captain puts his personal notes on the on the phone. So, you know, but but in the United States, we have reason to believe that that he committed a crime. We go further. We have our law enforcement tools in order to seek information from that phone. Okay. Any questions so far? Phones, electronic devices, recordings, anything, evidence. Okay. So. As I, this is another picture I just photo. I don't know what I'm looking at. I'm not the expert now, but I'm the investigator. I'm the investigator in the wheelhouse, looking at everything, okay? Asking the captain. Meanwhile, I'm talking. I'm, I'm observing. I'm observing what's going on all around me. I see this. What is this? And just, just ask the captain. May verify what it is, you know? The captain's not going to lie. It's right there. It's the VMS unit, okay? So, take a photo. Then, you notice something over here. The VMS is cut. It's, it's sliced, right? Take a photo. Take a zoom photo. You know, because later down the road, if you take that previous photo, you don't know what's what's going to what, what what happened. But now, now a picture tells a story, right? The VMS line was cut, and that's the reason why it was off. Okay, it can happen. Uh, I guess this vessel was on dry dock, and they inadvertently cut the lines, the, the mechanics, or the, the machinery on. So it, it can happen. But this is on a, a long line boat, and it was getting UK. So in such cases, they're supposed to check, yes. But they thought they, they thought they checked, and they thought it was in working condition, the VMS was on. So in such a case, how, how, how reliable is the statement that it is never I'm sorry, say again? No, in such a case. How can you rely on such a statement that it was in a Well, that, that's what we interview the captain for. We, the, the captain will let us know, and we interview, um, we, we knock his statement down. If I interview you, say, you know, the reason, is this your, is this your PMS? Uh, you're going to tell me yes. And I, my ultimate goal is to get a confession. Okay. You're going to admit that it's your, your, your VMS, but I want your confession. I want the truth. My job is to get the truth from you. Okay. So I can write it down and put it in a nice case package and then send it off to the prosecutor and he will decide. Okay. But it, it all depends. I'm, if I go up to you and you're nervous, if, like you said, you're nervous, am I going to believe you that you you hear me? mistakenly or accidents the lines were cut. So it's, it's, I have to interview you. That's the only way. You'll see it. What happened? What happened? Like Captain said, the five W's. What happened? Who, what, who, who cut the line? Where? How, when did this happen? So that kind of stuff. So it's all testimony evidence. Sorry, yeah. You can also request the VMS information 
if it was a foreign flag vessel from the flag state, and if all of a sudden you looked at its last trip and they weren't reporting BMS, then you have even more suspicion that that line was cut before it dry docked. So always verify. Yeah, so that's, that's what I'm saying. Put on your thinking cap. We're the investigators out there. We don't just observe. We're not observers now, we're investigators, okay? We're digging, we're digging. Okay, yeah. Keep it going, keep it going. I don't want to take this home. Did I give you one yesterday? Okay. Did I give you one? Sir? I know, I, mean, uh, I gave you one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think the photo for computer dead and time. One. The photo is uh, uh, get the time and uh, if we get the picture, we must uh, headmaster witness. What's the look? Next. I think it's, uh, is this a stock internet? Oh, yes. No, it's geotech photos we get to Hang on, we need it in the, micro, uh, in the microphone because everybody can't hear. Two more questions, that? Sorry. It's possible to take geotype photographs now, where you know you get all the lat long videos plus date and time of the uh, photograph. It's possible to take now, even with your smartphones, you can take it. Oh, okay. For for us, certain information we can and cannot take in the United States. Like you said, uh, like Brendan said, it depends on our legislation. So, okay. Uh, okay. I want to ask this question. How many have Facebook? Facebook, Facebook. I know you guys have Facebook. What is the other one, the popular one? Instagram? Instagram? Who has Instagram? Huh? In Southeast, on your side, what, what is popular? What is the, uh, what is popular? Who has Twitter? Twitter, Twitter. Uh, some people, yeah. Uh, well, people like to brag, brag on social media. You know their catch of their, you know their fishing catch, right? Have you seen it before? You know, we've seen a lot of, um, you know, like this one, getting close to a marine mammal. You know, uh, eBay, eBay people. I think this is a narwhal toss, ivory, you know, which is illegal in the U.S. You know, but they they brought it and then they're trying to sell it. They're trying to make money. But that's evidence. That's evidence. If I see that on the computer, what am I going to do? What? Take a photo. Take a photo and we'll investigate later. Okay? Take a photo first. That's the number one step. Yeah? This is uh, MySpace. MySpace, I'm not familiar with MySpace, but, but again, like Facebook. Um, you know, a lot of people, there's going to be a lot of uh, hidden clues on Facebook, depending who, who's out, you know, in social media, so. And there's ways to, there's ways to uh, identify who's behind that picture, who uploaded the picture. Um, but that's a whole different uh, subject. Any questions so far? Facebook? Social media? Do you have celebrity gossip in your countries? Many. You know how they show this person said this on Twitter, but then they delete the post, right? People can delete that information. So Brandon brought up the most important point here. If you come across it online, that doesn't mean it will stay online. So take a picture. And you know, at the bottom of computer screens often has time and date and things like that. So you can have a time stamp on that photo before somebody can delete that social media post. In, in America, we call it Snapchat. Everybody heard of Snapchat? They, the kids do that now, right? So, um, yes. Okay. Uh, that. That thing is uh, prohibited in uh, in US. And I took a photo in Philippines. Am I liable for my, for that uh, or, or any? You took a photo? 
Okay. Are you trying to make money off that? Are you behind this? Are you behind this? You're probably liable if you sell it to somebody, somebody in the U.S. You're probably liable. I, I don't know about if you sell it from Philippines to Philippines, but in the U.S. it's an endangered species, so it's illegal to trade. Uh, we've had cases where it was they were sending uh, was it whale ivory from the Philippines. They were putting it in the Balikbayan box. You know Balikbayan? Yeah? And, uh, and they would uh, ship it to the Philippines. It would carve it and then send it back into the U.S. Okay, so um, ultimately, yeah. So we we got the uh, the person in the Philippines back. Right so yeah, yeah. I know it's tradition, but not in the U.S. So. We we come across with all that Samoan tradition, uh, Fijian tradition, but the bottom line is we have to go by our legislation. Okay. Um, in the U.S., like I said, we, we, everybody has their due process rights. Um, we have to show all the evidence into court. Okay. How do you guys do it? Do you guys have a ministry of courts where you guys show up to court and say somebody's arrested for a violation? You guys have that? Okay. Do you guys just show up, or what happens? I mean, do you have a prosecutor? Yeah. No jury, huh? Just a judge. And the judge tells tells your future then. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. So anyway, but but like I'm saying, all this evidence is statement approved. If you if you did that, you sold it, and we have all these pictures, and we have uh, we. You sent to the person in the U.S. and we talked to him, and he gives us his statement that it was you. You sent it to him. You sent it to him last week. Uh, you've been doing this for a long time. That's our evidence against you, right? So, yeah. So, like I said, as an investigator, there's two types of evidence: admission and there's confession. Okay, admission is, you took a photo, yeah, you admitted you took a photo, you know, but did you really mean to sell it to the person in the U.S.? Yeah, so we want your confession. You understand everybody out there, confession, that's our goal. I committed the crime. I, I caught fish in this illegal area, or I am, we are a illegal vessel. We are not authorized to fish. You understand? Any questions so far? Maybe a legal question. Yes. Uh, admission and confession. Uh, whether the first one is only verbal or uh, written also? So, sorry. Yeah. Written or verbal? Oh, written or verbal. Admission. Uh, the admission could be both. Could be both. Could be both. Yeah. That's what what I'm is not the difference between these two? Because uh, on an admission, you say that it may not be sufficient to establish the guilt. Yeah. I, I admit that I was on the fishing vessel. I was on the fishing vessel. Yeah. Oh, but did I commit a crime? Did I fish? Did I fish in the water? Was was I fishing? Did I do the act? Did I do the crime? But I was on a fishing vessel. But that doesn't mean that you have not acted upon it. Yeah, exactly. Maybe I was the, the cook on the vessel. Maybe you don't, know. you don't know. Until the interview. You gotta you gotta use your mouth, you gotta talk to somebody, you gotta communicate. That's the, the only way you're gonna get a confession. Okay? Okay. Am I a VMS X? Are you a BMS uh, expert? Anybody BMS expert? Raising your hand. Anybody? Okay. Well, say I have a case on a BMS. 
uh, based on the tracks. Who am I going to call? Who am I going to call? Right? Yeah, via your VMS person that does VMS. So they can tell me, yes, these, this is consistent with per se fishing vessels. Right? Computer. Am I a computer, expert in computer? No. Taking off the computer, you, you find somebody that's an expert. Okay? Uh, I don't know, uh, competitors. Competitors in the fishing industry. Uh, other, other law enforcement officers. In the, in the US, we work with a lot of other agencies, Coast Guard, Customs, and they're out there too. They're our eyes and ears. And they give us information. And if we have to rely on them, they're our expert witness also. So, um, we even have like a, uh, an expert on whales and how the behavior and how a fishing vessel uh, perhaps harassed a whale. And, and, and an expert can tell you what, you know, what, uh, why, why the, the whale was harassed or you know, potentially injured. So, you know, it's an individual with specific knowledge. Yeah? But you guys are all experts too, right? In the fishery. In the fishery, right? So if I have a question on fisheries, who are you going to ask? It's customs, you're going to ask, you know, it's customs going to rely on you folks. What type of fish is this? You should know, right? I'll, someday, like, I want to be on TV and, like, like the experts over here. Okay, fishery observers. You want to rely on non fishery observers because I'm not out there. I'm not out at sea. I'm not looking at how the fishing is done. So I'm going to rely on my friend here to tell me what goes on out at sea and what these documents are. Why is this coded this way? Why, why the number seven on this, in this blank? Okay. Demonstrative evidence, anybody know what demonstrative evidence is? You're looking, just looking at, demo. it's like traps. It, it, a picture tells that there's a potential violation, but it's not a proven violation, okay? But if I ask my VMS expert, what are these tracks mean? You know, these tracks, maybe he's saying, you know, these tracks are consistent with fishing, illegal fishing inside a closed area. Maybe he's, the, you know, this tracks can, uh, appears uh, several sets were done. You know, they set and they haul, so it, it appears that. So my VMS expert can tell me that. So once I have his testimony, it, it's the demonstrative evidence becomes stronger for your case, for your investigation. Because you gotta tell it in front of the judge, right? Like you said, right? not the jury, the judge. So the judge gotta understand. So you gotta make it appear that you know to prove your case. Okay. So you're on the boat again, right? Again, what is the number one rule? Safety. Okay. Once once you identify everybody on board, you identify all the crew members, person on board. You're monitoring them. Now you're looking. You're looking. Yeah. And, and again, when I said when you board the vessel, you're going to assign teams, right? You're going to have, like I told you, you're going to have maybe six or seven of you folks. Granted, you may be on different agencies, different ministries, different jobs, but you're going to assign. You're going to have a team leader. You're going to say, Hey, I'm going to talk to the captain. Meanwhile, can you can you uh, talk to the crew? You too talk to the crew. Um, you do the security of the vessel, okay? And then you know, you, then after all of it is done, we can all search. All four of us search. In a chronological order, you want to assign roles while you're on the vessel. Okay? So it just makes it faster. It makes it methodical. Uh, like, and you're going to have photographers, not. Not everybody taking pictures. You want one, maybe make it easier. You want one person to take photos, one person to hold the camera. Yeah, that way you don't have, like Todd said, what he does is he takes a photo of the front of the vessel with one camera, and then he's the photo person. He's the photo. He's taking photos, and uh, you know then you can say all these photos came off of Todd's camera, not somebody else's camera. Todd's camera. Chain of custody there. 
How many heard of chain of custody? Chain of custody, anybody? Okay. I know you have, okay. Okay, and then and you know, we're the ones that collect the evidence. You see a violation, you see shark fins. You see shark fins over there. You're just gonna take a photo of it, you gotta collect it afterwards. So, you're gonna put on your gloves, you're gonna get your plastic bag or whatever box you have, and you're gonna collect it. But meanwhile you collect it, like I said, who's gonna collect it? You gotta write that down. Um, and who's gonna, who's gonna pack it up? And then where is it gonna go? So, and that, that all belongs to the chain of custody. We'll show you that. This goes to Brandon's point of telling the story. Take the picture of the shark fins. Take the picture of the shark fins being collected. Take a picture, or whatever evidence, because I know national laws here are different. Take a picture of the evidence being collected. Take a picture of the bag. And then you have the story. It was on the vessel. Here's the proof of it on the vessel. And here it's being collected. Okay, like I, and that's it. Evidence could be anywhere, anywhere on the vessel. Yeah, but it, it's up to you to look further. You know, we're not going to be on the vessel for you, telling you where to look. You gotta, you gotta do the work. You gotta do, it could be in the fishing gear, could be in the hold, could be in the, the, the captain's captain's room. Yeah, but you gotta get down and dirty. Even if you gotta get down and dirty, but you do it, but you do it safe again. You would say, okay, just to verify, everything is legal. Okay. Ask yourself, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? Are you looking for just fish? Anybody? Any fish? No, like I said, possible shark fins, possible knives, possible drugs, you know? Brandon, yes? Sorry, just can go back one slide. I just want to get one important point. So, talking about, again, court state measures. Remember, national authority decides when and where you can search and inspect. You want to make sure that you have the appropriate legal authority to check all of those spaces. So like I said, in the U.S., our Port State Measures Agreement, our Port State Measures Act, gives us very broad authority to search and inspect any fishing or fishing support vessel for evidence of compliance with the Port State Measures Agreement. Okay, so that basically gives us full authority but when Brandon's talking about make, you know, checking all the areas, you could be anywhere on the vessel, make sure you have the legal authority because your evidence goes out the window as soon as you're someplace you're not supposed to be collecting evidence. Okay, so make sure you have the legal authority and that's just want to hit that real quick. Yeah, good point, good point. Make sure you're lawfully there. Okay. Maybe we have a search warrant. Do you guys have search warrants capability? Search warrant? Anybody? Try raise your hand. Search warrants. You know what a search warrant is? It's authorized by a judge to to uh, search for uh, in your house. Say, yeah, yeah. So I've done a lot of search warrants. So search warrants. So say you're holding the. Uh, the illegal fish in your house, something in your freezer. How am I gonna get that? How am I gonna get to see that your free, in your freezer? Right? Apply for a search warrant. And in the U.S., we have uh, we have the judges that authorize us. So it's our legislation. It's a court order. So it, it's basically, like I said, our authority to search and inspect a fishing vessel. We don't need a warrant. So. That's considered what we call a warrantless search. So we yes. can do that under our statute. As soon as we go someplace such as a home or an office where we don't normally have inspection authority, where there's some expectation of privacy, for us it requires us to go to a court and demonstrate that we have probable cause or basis. And the court authorizes us to then search that location. So that's we call it a search warrant. I'm not sure what it may be called in each of your countries. If you're, say, you need to go search a residence for evidence of a crime, do you have to go to a court to have a judge say, yes, you may go and search there? It's similar. It seems, okay, so in Malaysia, it seems similar. Other countries, similar requirement if you need to say search a residence for evidence. A house, sorry. Yes. Search a house or an office. 
Okay. Hopefully, we can follow up if you have other questions. That hopefully that is. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, again, you, our role, we're seizing fish. So you gotta know how you're gonna seize that fish. Is it perishable? You're gonna look in the freezer, storage, okay? It can it be documented and sold? Okay. Okay, so when you, when you, you're gonna get down how to collect the evidence now. So you see your evidence, you're gonna try to collect it, okay? You're gonna do a preliminary survey now, okay? <clears throat> okay, so I'm searching around the boat, I'm searching around the boat, and I see some, I see a violation, I see something over here that I want to collect, okay? It's, it's the Mac nuts, okay? But make pretend this is a, make pretend this is a the fish inside, okay? There's fish inside. So, what am I going to do? What am I going to do first? I'm the... I saw this first. I saw this. And that's evidence. That's potential evidence in that fish hole. Take the picture, yes. Yeah? Oh, maybe Todd's the photo. Fo the photo man. Okay? Have him take a picture of where it is. What hole it is. What well. Okay? What well. Okay? And then you're going to have a collector. You're going to have a collector. And then you're going to have somebody that writes the marking down. So at 3 o'clock, 3.05 after break, he's going to write down who collected it. I'm going to collect this. I'm going to collect this. Uh, I'm going to collect the evidence. Okay? And I'm going to put it neatly in a box. So right now I have the item. Nobody else does. It's under my control. Okay? So I'm preserving the evidence to make sure nobody, nobody opens this package now, okay? okay. Yes? Uh, can I ask if, uh, is it necessary that uh, there is a, uh, is it necessary that there is a crew on board that uh, uh, looking for you uh, or uh, Accompany you why you uh, when you when you take that evidence or just you take the evidence? Ah. Any witness, a witness from the crew or the universal that you take that the evidence. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, they, that that's possible. They can watch you collect the evidence. You mean, but they're gonna touch it? No. no. Just witness your what you are taking. Yeah. For a crew member? A crew member. Yeah, if they want to watch. If they want to watch. But but for myself too, for to cover myself, I'm gonna have maybe one of my guys, one of my team members, <coughs> Catherine, or you, to watch me collect the evidence. Okay? So in case something goes missing, there's there's three boxes of candy in there. What if there's two of them? First person, the crew member says there's there were four boxes of candy, or four fishes in there. So I, I'm going to copy myself from having my witness also. So it's, you can have the vessel's witness, anybody can watch. But I'm also going to have, it's always good to have another witness. So. Yeah, just, um, just on that point, I would almost absolutely have a witness there. If you have another team member, have them witness that you are seizing the evidence at that point in time. Not only that, record it in your notebook. So record record the time, even go through the process, have the photographer taking photos of you seizing that as evidence. Um, so you've got photographic evidence of that being taken. Have the, It's not a bad idea even to have the master in that photo as you're taking it so that you, the master can't say, well, I never saw you take that. Whatever means you need, to prove that you actually seize that and that they were aware of you seizing it. In Australia, we have a, um, a receipt book, so a seizure receipt book. So in that, we write down what we seized and what it was, all the details, when we seized it, the time, the date, everything, and then we get the master to sign it and we provide them a copy of that receipt. So that way, there's no argument down the track that a, 
that you seized it or that giving it back, whatever you go through, it has to happen through the, um, the prosecution process. Um, and that's also verifying the number of items that were taken, etc., etc. So whatever you need to prove the point that you seized that item and how many there were um, is, yeah, I cannot stress that enough. Having a witness is a great start, but then also highlighting in your notebook photographs and if you've got a receipt book. Okay, follow up. Follow up. If there are uh, if there are five items, is it necessary to just get one or take thought? If there's five different different items or just five uh, items? Just uh, five items. Uh, as a, you can uh, as if it's the same fish, all, same fish, yeah, same fish in one same. area, yeah, in the one hole, to take the whole, take them just take the whole five. This is five bags. Yeah. Uh, okay. But what if you have a Couple hundred to fish. What are you going to do? Uh oh. Yeah. No, just I mean, you're going to you got to seize whatever evidence is necessary to prove the elements of the violation. You need to prove the case. So, if there's five fish that prove your case, you need to seize the five. Uh, if it's the entire load is suddenly illegal, then you need you, you need to seize and arrange for a secure storage. For us, we go into a cold storage and have it secured. I mean, all of those things. And completely agree with what Brandon said. We have similar, I mean, Brandon's gonna to get to our receipt process. But I think one of your questions was, is it required for somebody from the crew to witness? And the answer for us is no. We should definitely have a witness, and ideally it should be somebody from our team. But the captain's gonna get a receipt and basically acknowledge that, yep, those items were seized from me, and here's the receipt I received. So, hopefully that. Well, all good questions, it's good. Yes. If the inhibitor is a big, very big, big shark. Yeah. Yeah. But like I said, if the shark is a is is your evidence, then you got to think outside the box. How are you going to do this? You know what if. How am I going to do this? But think outside the box, right? Maybe you just want to take a sample. Maybe you want to just, you know, take a sample and send it to the lab. And, but the photos, the photos will tell you. And I'll, I'll show you that in the, the video, I mean, the, the PowerPoint. Mostly in my company, we only take one and then take in. And then just that, that item is we tender, tender in court. Oh, okay. One of the uh, dividend to tender to oh, prove it. To prove it out. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll move on. Okay. okay again, uh, best practices: handling the evidence, collect and handle the evidence, like I told you. And uh, for us, each individual piece of evidence should be bagged. Well, photographer, photograph, bag, what we call is tag, bag, seal, labeled with a with a tape, you know, seal with a tape, labeled with your your signature, saying that I I seize this, and it should be securely stored. Okay. Securely stored means what? Like like a safe, like a like a lock up. Yes, something in your office or wherever you guys keep your. Your uh, your evidence, your designated evidence room. Okay, so these are some of the evidence tags that we use. You know, uh, if, if it's a huge shark, well, we gotta we gotta uh, improvise. Yeah, but most of the time, it's uh, this is you know tag, bag, and seal, and then we store it in our evidence room. Evidence room should have like a freezer because we see fish. So, go ahead. And like Brandon said, we have a chain of custody sheet now. Okay, what is evidence? How was it obtained? Date and time the evidence? Who handled it? You know, and where has it traveled? So I prepared an evidence sheet. I'm the investigator now, so I'm the seizing person. So I this is our form. It's the case number. I put a C thick number one case. Okay? 
date acquired, today's date, July 24th. I collected it. Okay, the seizure tag. I put a seizure tag. It's a number 33622. Okay. Collected by me, Noah Office, uh, Officer Brandon. Okay. And the evidence type is, is fish. Okay. There's, there's different categories. Um, one box, possibly bluefin tuna. Okay. Uh, I, I acquired it from the fishing vessel IIU. Um, IUU. It's a, um, possible. And I, I got it from the um, fish hole from the vessel master. Okay. So I signed for it. Okay. This goes with the evidence. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm at the port. I'm at the port. I got off the vessel. I got my evidence. Now how am I going to get it securely to the evidence room? Okay. You need to get it to Catherine, who's your evidence custodian. Okay. So hey, I can't go. I have to. I have another uh, inspection to do. Brunei, can you can you sign for it? Okay, I'm going to transfer the evidence to you. You sign for it. Yeah. So. Okay. Transferred from me. Transferred to you. You write your name and you sign for it. Okay. And the date. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so evidence that he received. Okay. Now I'm done. Okay, I'm done. I transferred it to him. You know, so what he does with it, it's his responsibility. Okay? Now, now I want you to take an airplane to Cambodia. Give it to Cambodia. Okay? And make them sign for it. So you release the evidence, they take the evidence. Okay? Yes, transport. So they're a neighboring port. Like I said, they're a neighboring port. And we have to get it securely, safely. Okay. Yeah, no, uh, second page, second page. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right there, yeah, okay. Your, your name. Yeah. There's not enough room, so yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Exactly, yes. Now you make sure what you're receiving is what is on there now, okay? Now you just sign. Sign today's date in person. You know. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay, good, good job. And this can go on and on, different days, right? Finally, we get to Catherine, who's our evidence custodian. She, she is the only one person that can go into the safe or the evidence, the evidence uh, storage locker. So you drive thousands of kilometers and you finally reach Catherine, and now what are you going to do? Okay, so now Catherine has the evidence, and we properly documented the transfer, and we now it's properly stored. Okay, so now if something, if there's a discrepancy, and there's only, you know, there's only there's a there's a fish missing, I can see who handled the evidence. You, you, or maybe Catherine did it. Maybe. Maybe I can ask her questions. Okay. So I'm an investigator now. Okay. So once that once that evidence is in safe safekeeping, it's good. Now it's going to stay there. It's going to stay there for for a while in the U.S. until until the trial date comes in the, new, the courts and the judge. When you're in trial, the judge you want they're going to review the evidence. And if something is missing, if it went to Brunei. 
Cambodia, Indonesia, and then to Catherine, all bets are off. You understand? That fish is suppressed. Suppressed meaning uh, uh, not, not allowed. Not allowed. The case is the case is dismissed. We lost the case. Yeah. There goes your investigation. So you want to prepare a nice investigation, a clean investigation, and like I said, interviews, evidence, whatever you got, make sure you do it right, slowly and methodically. Okay. Anything to add, guys? Yeah. In the cases, the owner of the boat is away. So the quality of the fish is low. So he, he wants to blend. And you So if, if in fact we lose the case, that means the evidence goes back to the owner. If there's any problem with it, if we've degraded the quality somehow, then yes, we are liable for potential claims against the government. Okay, so that, I mean, for us, that's how that works. But in, and that's why if we have like fresh, fresh fish product, it's perishable, we will sell it at highest bid, we consider fair market value, and that money is held because if we lose the case, the owner is entitled to that claim back. So, yes. If you get it, if you you win the case and Catherine's eating some of the bluefin tuna, we have a big problem. <laughs> so again, chain of, chain of custody is very important, okay? Especially when you tell in front of the judge. Um, this is one of our cases. This is one of my cases. Happened a while ago. Uh, we had an airplane Coast Guard. Like I said, Coast Guard, and what they do is they fly over and they see this vessel. What do they do? What do they do? They see this vessel, it's an unidentified vessel. A foreign vessel, it could be a possibly a foreign vessel. Right? What are they gonna do? So they're videoing it. Right now we have video. Okay. Go ahead. They, oh, they zoom in. Now, now I can investigate further. I have a, I have a number here. Yes. Latin long, right there. Northeast, okay? That was provided to me now, so there. Oh! What, what are they doing? What are they doing? You see lines in the water? Lines in the water? That lad and long could be possibly illegal fishing. We don't know that. We have to confirm. But for now, I am documenting that evidence. Because once the lines go up, I got nothing. Right? Right? This is key. This, this is what I'm going to show the judge. There's lines in the water. I, granted, I don't know, I don't see, I don't have a close-up view of this, these people fishing. Yeah. And this is a, you know, a potential IUU vessel. Yeah. Again, they're still fishing. They're still fishing. Meanwhile, we're documenting the time, the date. See the date, the time. Right. They're fishing in the back of the vessel. Yeah? So all this photo, photograph evidence is key. Right? A picture tells a story all on its own. It could make a case. You know, and and result as a result, as a result, you know, we stopped the vessel. We got the crew, uh, we got the statements. The testimonial statements, all the testimonial statements said, yes, we saw the vessel with the lines in the water fishing. The, proof, the photos that were provided. We did the WCPFC. We ran the, uh, the listing for the, the foreign fishing vessel. The map, the map printouts. The Coast Guard GPS verification form. It's a verification form saying that what they saw is the right latitude and longitude of where that vessel was fishing at. Okay? Apparently it was fishing in a closed area. Not supposed to be. Okay? So all these photos and videos were on a compact disc. Not on a phone, but it was on a, on a disc. And that, that disc, I had to get 
maintain that custody of it. Right? Secure it. Bag seal, bag and tag. And then get it to our evidence from it. I don't want to lose that case. So, any questions? Evidence, just, just remember that evidence. Photos, photos, you know. Any, anybody can share their experience with evidence? Uh, lost a case, won a case? No? Okay. But, okay, well, that's it, Evan. I hope you guys had an overview um, of how we, we do it in the U.S., of processing the evidence and how you know, it hits the chain of command and uh, it stays clean.